the city of Chicago uh, says, well, yes, we recognize that the Supreme Court has said we can't deny our citizenry the right to keep and bear arms, but uh, we can prohibit uh, the construction or the running uh, management of any uh, firearms uh, uh, stores or any uh, uh, training ranges, and we're going to require that you have to be licensed and trained and pay a fee and so forth, all of which are roadblocks that, uh, if applied to other amendments, other rights guaranteed in the Constitution, such as uh, uh, religious freedom or uh, speech freedom or the right to be free from government searches, would you know, just be summarily rejected out of hand. But because it's the Second Amendment, because it's you know, firearms and they're so dangerous and so many people are hurt by firearms, governments can get away with this. Uh, and they're going to continue to do it uh, largely because uh, they can and they do and many of our fellow citizens don't care about these issues, don't recognize them for how important they are, uh, but also uh, because the Supreme Court uh, has not uh, uh, issued and did not take advantage, and particularly in the uh, McDonald case, uh, of rendering a bold, constitutionally based decision that would have obviated the need for all, all sorts of future litigation that we're going to see. But threats to the Second Amendment uh, from state and local governments constantly looking for ways to probe, uh, to you know, gain new power, uh, or to hold on to what power they do have with regard to firearms. The threats to the Second Amendment will continue to come from other directions as well. It's very much uh, a, uh, a multifaceted uh, attack that we see here.